the time. Um, so our next lecturer today, uh, I'm very pleased to introduce, is uh, Dr. Tudor Vasilio. He's a researcher at the Petrupon Institute of Macromolecular Chemistry in uh, Yash, Romania, where I am frequently, but I'm frequently visiting. Uh, uh, Dr. Vasilio uh, received his uh, PhD, I think, uh, four years ago. And uh, he has been yes. uh, working uh, on molecular dynamic simulation or accelerated molecular dynamic simulation during and after uh, his uh, PhD. Uh, and uh, uh, he has been applying uh, frequently to nucleic acid. But today he's going to speak about uh, something different, which is the use uh, of uh, this uh, um, new method um, with artificial intelligence, the use of chat GPT uh, in molecular dynamic simulation with application to nucleic acid. So thank you, uh, Tudor, the floor is yours. Hello, and thank you for the nice presentation. So uh, first, let me share the screen and please tell me if you can see it. Yes, we can see it. Um... Okay. So uh, today's presentation, I wanted to do it about ChatGPT and basically how we can use it to lessen the work that we do when we are trying to perform molecular dynamic simulations and basically to help our lives. <laughs> uh, the third things I and uh, firstly I want to mention that I didn't make the PowerPoint presentation. Basically, I have, as you can see, I have the ChatGPT open, and I will work on it and show you exactly how you can use it and what kind of results the an answer does it provide you. What are uh, some um, let's say, traps that ChatGPT usually makes, uh, some mistakes, and uh, I'll try to present it to you. Please, at any time, if you have uh, any questions or if you want to ask, you ask me to ask ChatGPT something and to see, to check what kind of answer it gives you, please uh, type it in the chat or uh, raise your hand and I stop me anytime in the, in the, while I'm talking and I will uh, ask your questions to ChatGPT. So the first thing that I find it most useful for uh, chat GPT is that you can consider it a personal trainer. So for example, I can ask him, uh, I want, oh, sorry. I want you to give me a, a, a page, of course I can say 10 page, of introduction to molecular dynamics and give me some links to tutorials of molecular dynamics using uh, Gromax, let's say the Gromax software. And he will start giving you a very good introduction and uh, the thing is that this is something that is really good because ChatGPT has access to basically an, a very large database of texts and files and stuff, and he is able to extract the really good information, really co good, com uh, really comprehensive one, and uh, it can help you understand things when you are at the beginning. You want to understand the phenomenon, you can ask him, and he will give you very good results in this way. Also, he is good at giving you different uh, links to tutorials, to stuff like this, like we have here. But as I said, sometimes ChatGPT makes errors. For example, in this case, and I've noticed with uh, ChatGPT 4.0 that uh, I can't click the links. So, but this is, I can solve this problem. So I, I can't click the links. Give them as plain text so I can copy them. And now I can just copy them, go to the browser, and I I can access them. Uh, 
Okay. So, uh, also, uh, another thing that uh, you can use ChatGPT is, for example, I have here, uh, I already searched this and made him give me some answers. Uh, because there's a the the there's a limit on how many questions you can ask ChatGPT. There's a limit of thirty questions per hours, per hour. So uh, I'm gonna use some pre-search questions just so because just so I don't uh, use them all up and I'll, during this presentation. And so I wanted, uh, I told the. Uh, uh, ChatGPT that you are a PhD student and want to start performing a simulation using Romax with GPU support and a DNA fragment in water. Please write a step-by-step -step protocol of how you will achieve this, starting from Romax installation, explaining every step and giving the commands to be put in the Linux terminal. Basically, I wanted, I have no idea how to do it. I, just show me how to do everything. And this is what his answer looked like. Basically, he started from installing the Gromax software, and it gives you the exact commands that you need. Everything presenting, you can just copy the code, put it in your terminal, and it will work like this. Then it goes to preparing the DNA fragment and the water box. It tells you how to perform, uh, uh, how to create, how to generate the DNA structure, how to prepare the files for it, how to define the simulation box, how to add water to the simulation box. And it also, because I told him to please explain the, every single step, it also provides descriptions of what all these minus C, minus F, minus D, what do they all mean? So you get a basic understanding of what you are doing. It's not just copy the, I mean, you can understand why you are putting this uh, text here and what does each, uh, dash do uh, then it adds ions to the system then it tells you that you need to perform an energy minimization then it tells you that you need to produce to make equilibration and after that i i said okay now that i have the trajectories i want to use vmd to analyze the end-to-end -end distance of the dna let's say please give me the uh, how would uh, how would I make it? And also, please explain every step. So, and again, it started with how do you how do you install the VMD, and then it gives you a script in the in the VMD, which VMD uh, the scripts that are used in VMD are TCL. Yes. Uh, sorry, was there a question? Olena, do you have a question? Ah, uh, no, no. I guess it was the microphone. Um, uh, maybe it doesn't work or. Uh, yeah, because uh, I thought I heard something, but uh, I couldn't yeah. understand anything. Yes, please write the message, and I will uh, read the to Tudor um, if you have the message. Tudor, if I receive the message, I will stop you. Yes, sure. So, and again, in the in the TCL script. Uh, the ChatGPT gave a very well description of what each line does, how you can modify it to, for example, to make it custom custom for your own system that you have built, and uh, and then it tells you how to execute the script and how to verify the results. The thing is that also, so for making scripts, VMD of uh, ChatGPT is extremely good, but it's still sometimes make some errors for example uh i had here uh i was working on a, a system i had a gold nanoparticle that contained 144 gold at oh sorry what did they do um, okay here that has 144 atoms and i wanted to for ChatGPT to make me a script that uh, selects only the gold atoms that are on the surface of the nanoparticle. So I said uh, to ChatGPT that I have a gold nanoparticle. I need a script in VAD that can give me that number of those atoms that are on the surface. And it gave me the script. 
it said what each line does, how I, what, where I should click with the script in order to make it for my system. For example, I had to set the cutoff distance where I considered the edge of the nanoparticle. In my case, it was a uh, 16 and uh, 16 uh, Armstrong uh, nanoparticle, so I had to change the three uh, this value from three to 16. And uh, I've put it in VMD and I ran it. The problem with this was that I got this error. It kept getting this error. And I came back and I said, I get this error. Miss I get this error. Missing operator routine expression. And VMD all automatically corrected it. There was a typo in the script. The correct syntax should do user array indices properly with the expression command. And it corrected the script. After that, I've put the new script in the in the in VMD and it gave me another error. So it fixed the first problem, but there was still some problem with it. And I came back and I told him that worked. But now I get this error. And he said, okay, there was a problem in this part here. And he read the script again. And and after that, I got another error. And uh, he identified the error again in the script according to the message that I received from VMD. And he gave me the script, this final version of the script that worked perfectly and uh, I didn't have problems. So I, it, I was able to properly select all the atoms in, uh, on the surface of the nanoparticles to get the indexes of it. And uh, this is a really nice way to uh, when you want to analyze something, when you have a trajectory, when you have a simulation done and you want to analyze something and you don't really know how to do it, you can ask ChatGPT how to do it and he will give you a, and he will give you the script, a version or something to to perform. So uh, now I want to show you how this would look like. And uh, I have here, a system that I worked on, it's a DNA molecule that uh, is, uh, I simulated a DNA molecule and I wanted to see how it interacts with three spermidine molecules. These are the three spermidine molecules that are uh, natural polycations. So of course there will be uh, an electrostatic attraction between the negatively charged DNA and the positively charged uh, spermidine. So I have extracted here a few frames. You can see the spermidine is interacting with the DNA. And uh, so, okay, I have the simulation now. I have the trajectories. Uh, I can go to chat GPT and say, I have, I have a simulation of uh, DNA interacting with spermidine, uh, spermidine, spermidine, and I want a script in VMD that gives me the closest uh, DNA residue to each spermidine in each frame. So I want to extract what is the closest residue to each uh, spermidine in every single frame. So he starts building the, the script, explaining what each line does. So, And then it gives you instruction on how to run it. Of course, when you when you make the script, you have to keep in mind that, for example, I mean to customize the script a bit to make it uh, to make it work with your uh, with your system, uh, because, for example, here set the spermidine selection which it says ResName SPD. Well, in my system, the spermidine has the residue ResName SPR. 
So if I would run this script, it wouldn't work. So I need you need to be careful to this uh, kind of uh, variables and res names and uh, stuff like this to click and to to make to tailor to your own uh, simulations. But uh, uh, may I ask? Yes, sure. Yeah. Uh, ju just a question. Uh, so, uh, if we at the very beginning in the question uh, to chat GPT uh, specify uh, some information about uh, uh, residues that we have, uh, like spermidin, not SPD, but SPR, uh, and so on, uh, so probably it will help us to uh, obtain a uh, good program with all this. Uh, uh, names that we need, not SPD, but SPR from the very beginning. Yes, you are right. Uh, the thing is that the more details you give in your first initial input to ChatGPT, the better he will work. So, and I mean, I I use the short message just for it to be a little bit faster during this presentation. But I mean, I could make uh, the input to be a uh, half a page message telling him all the details, everything that I have, and he will keep track of it and he will take notes of them and he will make the script accordingly to every single thing that I put there. But this is just something that I did fast for the presentation to show how it works and how it looks like. Thank you. Uh, okay, so then after that, you simply go to copy the code, you copy in a, in a script. Let's put it here. Uh, because I already uh, have loaded the file and the trajectory. I don't need him to load any others. So I've put it like I committed those. Uh, I have to change the name here. OK. Now let's see if it works. So in, in order to run scripts in VMD, you go to extension, you open the TK console, and here then you go source script. Uh, why is not working? Sorry. Uh, Uh, sorry for technical difficulties. Uh, I really have. Done. No. And closest residues, frame zero, spermidin. This is the um, okay. So it's not okay. There are too many spermidin. There should be only three. Uh, the thing that I think it does, it's giving me the. Uh, no, I don't know what it does. Uh, okay, let me, I didn't, I should have checked the script first. Uh, I mean, maybe make the script before the presentation, but let's see why.
Dulu juga obat. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is the first time it actually gave me such a really wrong answer and really wrong script. So I don't know uh, where the problem is. Uh, okay, let's try a different script. Uh, maybe a simpler one. Show you how it works. Let's uh, show you how. Uh, Francesca, I'm sorry. There is a suggestion in the chat. Oh. It probably set up a cutoff distance for the range of closed residues. Uh, it has a variable mean underscore this, so that might be so. Let's see, where is it? Yes. Let's put 10. Let's do it again. No, still not. That if I try to do some, but no. But no, it says that it, they, there are too many spermidines. I think it goes. What? Yeah. Modify, modify the script. To use res ID and selecting the sperm meetings because it uses indices and indices are for atoms, not for the residues. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what the problem is. I think. But either way, let's uh, let's try for something a little bit more simpler. If let me try again this one, if it doesn't work, let's try for a, a, a easier, a bit easier script. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. Okay, uh, but let's say, uh, give me a VMD script that, uh, that uh, puts in a text file the distances between the pair atoms. from each base pair. This is another type of analysis that is usually done when you're working with DNA. With the DNA, because uh, it gives you the minor groove distance, which is a uh, which usually uh, you which usually gets analyzed when performing DNA simulation. Now let's try the script to see if how it works, and I hope ChatGPT won't fail me because I. Talked him up so much at the beginning, and now doesn't want to 
perform as well as I said it will. <laughs> Okay, it did something, but not what I wanted it to do. As you can see, it took each uh, DNA residue and gave me to the distance. To each, uh, basically, ChatGPT didn't know what a base pair meant. So in uh, a DNA, a base pair is uh, are the two um, nucleic acids that are that are uh, are in line parallel to each other how to say exactly so uh, okay let me let me change the representation to better show it this so a base pair are these two nucleic acid form a base pair so they're always the <clears throat> they're in, um, in the same line. Uh, so I need to, now I need to tell uh, GPT to change the, Uh, let's see. Uh, I want the script to give me the distance. Only the smallest distance. Let's open again. Um, Okay, so invalid command name. Now we can say, uh, now we can go to ChatGPT and say, I have this error now. Um, there was a question, but uh, I missed the. Uh, um, 
uh, where they asked if it's possible to ask GPT to correct the script to give only the single closest residue for every SPR. Um, Well, I will do it. Uh, okay, uh, I will do exactly this. It probably set up a cutoff distance for the range of closest residues. Uh, um, so, The value for me in this is just the uh, initialization, and it uh, in it it uh, with this value, it it doesn't have it, it recalculates it after. Here you see. So this is just an initial value that it put it here. Usually I use zero for this kind of when I make the script, but uh, it doesn't have any meaning that value there. Um, I really like how polite ChatGPT is. He always apologizes for when he makes mistakes. <laughs> No, oh, so the work and it killed VMD. So okay. Okay. Uh do you want me to ask him something? Uh do you have any suggestions for questions to ask regarding this? Yes, yes. Uh, uh may I ask? Yes, sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I just uh uh, have a general question. So the first is, uh, so we, we obtain, uh, this is actually a very good tool and we can uh, uh, work on uh, formulation of uh, question, uh, what we want and so on. And as a result, we obtain uh, uh, some 
script uh, with many lines uh, with some description and so on but uh, finally uh, we should be sure that uh, this script uh, calculates uh, properly uh, the, uh, what we want so how we can check this because uh, chat gpt can give us also sometimes uh, uh, some mistakes uh, or maybe not mistakes but maybe uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, do not understand us properly what we want uh, so this is the question uh, I, I mean general so uh, we we have to check somehow how uh, what uh, uh, does it calculate for when performing simulations I mean one way is to uh, Look, I mean, you have the trajectories. You can do the calculation manually for one frame, for example. So if I want to, uh, one second, oh, wait, give me. So if I have, for example, uh, the DNA system, and I want to calculate the distance between two phosphates, I can use for this frame, for example, select the two phosphates, I get the distance between them, and then I run the script that chat GPT give them, and I, and I check to see if the values from the script coincide with this. I mean, do uh, and do it like this. Okay, take a single example, and okay, if this works, then I can, um, I can uh, apply the text and I can assume that all the frames are good that are analyzed after that. So that that's the way to do it because basically it's good to use uh, chat GPT when, to uh, how to say it, to to optimize things. So because for get the distance between the phosphate to phosphate atoms, you can do it manually like I just did for every single pair, for every single frame, but it would take ages. So instead of doing this, I will ask ChatGPT, okay, make me a script that does this for me. And this is the idea to use it. And you, the easiest way to check it is to apply it for the for the single frame that you are using it, for a single frame, for us to look at it, see, compare it with the exact uh, image distances that you have in the system and see if it works, if if it's okay. If it's not okay, uh, okay, you can tell ChatGPT why that is not okay and maybe he will give you an answer. Why it's not okay, he will realize that something is wrong or you can, or you look at the script and maybe you can identify the, the stuff. Or, or you can ask him in a different way uh, to give you the results that we're interested in. Thank you. There is also another question. Um, uh, Ser uh, Sergi, another Sergi, uh, ask uh, what would be the right sequence of question when studying MD and Gromax in particular? What are the key words we need instruction and examples, like the way you already showed, but in more systematic way, from beginner to pro, so to say? Thank you. But let's see. I'm really curious. I want to do something. Just change pity what he thinks are the good stuff. What are the good <laughs> question to ask him? Hmm. And 
see it's basically what it gave me the first time when I told him to give me the system. A small introduction in molecular dynamics, then what is Gromax, then how to install Gromax. Uh, then this one is basic concept and terminologies that are used, how to prepare the system, how to generate the files, how to add the water and how to add the ions, how to perform the minimization, how to set up and run the simulation, and how to analyze it. And the thing is that, for example, you see here, GMX gyrate. I haven't heard of it. What does it do? And you, you can ask, what does GMX gyrate do? Uh, Tudor, are you using uh, M3 or uh, paid version of? Uh... No, uh, I am using paid version at the moment. But uh... is there any difference that you know between? Um, uh, is there any difference between the free and the paid version? Uh, yes, there is a difference. Uh, the the paid version has access to newer sources, basically. But at least for the basic stuff that you want for introductions, tutorials, and stuff like that, you don't really need it because these have been for a very long time on the internet, so it has access to them. Uh, and also, the paid version works a little bit better when you ask him to provide you with sources for different things. So if you want to, uh, so let's say, give me a art a a source for an article where they used uh, GMX gyrate. Provide me the link. But this is the only thing that uh, ChatGPT really isn't that good with it. Uh, it can't, uh, it sometimes uh, hallucinates and invents sources. So if you tell him to give me a source, he can't find one. So he will just invent one. So if you want to go to the, so for example, here I go to the site, I have, you have to really check, see, look at the article, check to see if it's what you ask him for, for it to be, because it either is a, a article that doesn't have anything to do with what you ask him for, or um, for example, I, uh, oh, one second, uh, where was it? I don't know, not uh -huh, here. So I ask him to okay here for example. I ask him I ask the um, ChatGPT what is the correct thermostat and battery set using Romax simulation of DNA interaction with monovalent ions? Explain your answer. So he gave me the a description of the most commonly use thermostat and barostat, what each does, and why sh we, you should use one again and not the other. And then I told him, give me an example of article that used this setting in simulation. And he did try to, but for example, here, it says this article, molecular interaction, that goes to the molecular, that goes to a correct, uh, to the correct, uh, article. But then for this one, simulation of DNA with proteins, it goes to the same one. So this is what I say, he sometimes invents stuff. This one is an invented uh, article that uses the same link as this one. So you have to really be very careful when he's giving you links, when he's giving you sources. Uh, this is not something at the moment that's uh, good for it. 
I've noticed there are some versions that are derived from ChatGPT online that are trying to to use only PubMed and uh, uh, article databases to give to do exactly this to help you find source to help you find uh, citations to help you find this, but they're still not that good as well. So this part it's still a little bit uh, not. I mean, take it with a grain of salt. Always triple check what the ChatGPT says because. Most often than not, it's not okay. Thank you. Is there uh, James is asking? There is an, a discussion in the chat. Uh, if uh, there is an optimal question site, or do you simply explain what you want for as long as you want? Uh... You can make it as long as you want. I made, uh, uh, I, I think half a uh, A four. Half a page of a for a, a page of uh, input, and it did everything what that I asked him to do. Kept in mind every single thing, so he doesn't. Uh, if he, if it's in one message, he will read everything, and he will keep in account everything. The thing is that you have to uh, keep in mind is that sometimes, uh, so when you are like here in the chat and you keep asking him questions, you have to keep in mind that at one point he will start forget if you set up any constraints at the beginning in the first question or in the second questions so you say okay uh, so let's say uh, i tell him to give me some details about the system and then i keep talking referring and i give the details of the system so give me details about the dna and spermidin system simulation and then i keep asking him question at one point he will forget that I want details about the DNA and spermidin system. He will forget that. And he will start giving me general details. And I have to remind him or uh, something like that. But in general, you can give him as much as you want. The, the maximum I did, uh, because I see there's a question like a page or multiple pages. So how much text can ChatGPT handle? A lot. For example, I had to make for a, for an internal thing at one point to make a scientific report uh, about uh, something that I worked on, and uh, I was curious what ChatGPT will do about that. So basically, what I did, I copied the text from an entire article that had twenty pages. I copy pasted it in ChatGPT and I told him to make me a scientific, a two page scientific report based on that article. And it made an extremely well scientific report. It looked really good, uh, presented everything that was in the article in a really nice way. So it, it, you can really use it to uh, summarize things, to present uh, a large amount of data in a short uh, space. So for him, you can put a very large text in him and tell him, okay, condense this text in one page, keep the essentials, keep just the essential or keep this part, this part and this part. And But it can handle the extremely large text with no problem. And as I told you, the, the more input inputs you put, the more restraints and constraints you put in, the, in your question, the more, uh, the better the answer will be. Also, uh, a, thing, a thing that I uh, noticed that works well when you speak with him is like I did in this, in the first question that I, show you, that I showed you, I told him, that you are a PhD student because you, when you do this, or you say you, you are a computational chemist, you are a researcher. You are a, a, something like this, a professor, and you want to give a course on something. You you restrict the database that he will go to to try to build your answer to, because so it so you increase the chance that the answer that he will give you will be more in tune with what you are looking for. So this is a very important part that you can do at the beginning say for example you want to write an article you say okay 
ChatGPT. You are a scientist and you have to write an article for a prestigious journal. I want you to give me an introduction regarding the subject X, and then you can, and he will write you like that, and he will write you that introduction, and then you can take that introduction and you can work on it and modify it and do things to it to make it your own. Uh, because there's a, and but the thing is, this is keep in mind this thing that there at the moment there is a significant debate in the in the scientific uh, community about the use of chat gpt some uh, people really support it and think that okay it's okay to use it so to especially in this type of context to write an introduction to a paper to better uh, to make the text better to better uh, to improve the language that you use to make your points uh, more better understood by the readers. And there are some other scientists that consider that, okay, no, this is not okay. This is uh, basically cheating and uh, it's very frowned upon. So always the best approach to do, okay, you ask ChatGPT when you are want to obtain a text from ChatGPT, Tell him to give you a text, but then copy it in Word and then rephrase it. Go rewrite it you yourself using your own words, and uh, to make it your own. Don't don't use the copy paste from ChatGPT direct. That's the my best. Thing. Also, another thing that it's good to to ask ChatGPT is let's say you write a. Uh, an introduction to uh, to an article, and you're not sure that uh, the what you wanted to say can, uh, can be easily understood by someone that reads the the text. So you can put the text in ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT, okay, what does this text want to say? And he and ChatGPT will read your text and will extract the, the ideas that are presented there. And then you look at it and see, did ChatGPT understood what I want to say? Or no, it didn't understand the one part or the other. So you can change the text. Uh, or you can ask him, ChatGPT, okay, but I wanted to emphasize more this point. How would you change the text to better emphasize this, this part of it? Or stuff like this. Uh, and I don't know. That's kind of about it about ChatGPT that I wanted you to that I wanted to present to you. If you have any more questions, please uh, let me know. May I ask? Uh, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to ask. Uh, so, if we create it as a program uh, using ChatGPT, do we need to uh, give some reference uh, to ChatGPT in in our paper or? In any, in any use. Uh, I don't think you need to. I don't think you need to uh, cite ChatGPT for providing a script, because the same way you don't cite uh, GitHub or other uh, software websites where you get parts of text or of softwares or of scripts that you apply to your own thing. Uh, honestly, I don't think it is because usually. Every single script that Chat GPT will give you, you will change something about it. You will make it your own somehow, according to your own simulations and to your own. So it's not a necessary thing. But all but you can check to see if because now there are some journals I saw that allow you to chat to to cite Chat GPT and to specify that the script was with was made with chat gpt and to mention the things that were done by by chat gpt uh, but as i told you some some site some journals accept chat gpt and they understand that okay people use it but please tell us for what you used it for and others they don't want to to know that you used chat gpt at all so, but in those cases, if you use it for a script, for analysis, for something like that, there's nothing wrong with it because 
in the same way you'd get the script from ChatGPT. You go to GitHub, you go to any tutorial that's made on VMD or something, and you extract uh, sections of code that are that you need to make your own script. So it's not like I'm I'm writing the software, the VMD software from scratch. I'm making it uh, from zero and uh, I will cite that I used VMD for analysis and I will cite VMD, but I don't have to cite the each uh, tutorial, each web page that I took a piece of uh, code that I built my script on. That's not how things are done. Thank you. Uh, thank yes, you. Exactly. Uh, okay, uh, you are reading the chat. Yes, yes, I yeah. have it open. <laughs> So okay. yes, as Sergi said, exactly the code is not the property of ChatGPT, and you can mention that in acknowledgments. But if you want to do this, pay very close attention to the journal and what are its requirements, because you might get a a, a decline instantly from the editor when you when you publish it because you are mentioning ChatGPT, because there are some people that really, really, really don't like ChatGPT and are not okay with it. So this is, you really need to pay attention to when you use it and how you use it. Thank you, Sergi. For, um, for the text, I would like to make a comment. There are, um, now we are measuring um, uh, somehow the use of um, the infiltration of ChatGPT in the writing by checking um, some particular work that um, uh, have been increased suddenly in 2023 or decreased. Like, for example, uh, words like undoubtedly has, has been uh, decreasing and um, words like meticulously have been suddenly increasing, have a spike or words that... Um, that the, the um, AI use very much uh, um, like intricate or um, so on. So maybe this word can be used to detect if <coughs> a text of your student or or um, is a suspicious if you don't want to have um, chat GPT or uh, um, use it for some reason or maybe um, you have to pay attention not to 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 some words that are uh, you know overused as a consequence of the use of chat gpt yes so uh, if there is no more uh, there are no more questions i would like um, to thank you tutor for um, discussing uh, chat gpt because it's an instrument that i think all of us should use in our future and as you have shown it's very great uh, what it can do for help us in the analysis i mean okay it's not perfect uh, but um, but still the time to learn to write the script is uh, is incredible or also if you know how to do it the time to write it uh, uh, a script for VMD like the one you show is very long. So even if you know the language, it's much better to have it written by Chat GPT and then correct it. Yeah, exactly. And then fine tune it to for it to work as best as you oh. want and to do exactly what you want. So I it's mean, a, if it's you already really... know it, it's really easy to for it have it make a rough draft of a script, and then you fine tune it, you use it, you change it to make it work properly. But um, and that's really useful because indeed it does takes a lot, especially if you have a thousand lines of code for a really complex analysis or something. It's really hard. So it's we all should uh, should take this opportunity, and I think it's very good to discuss this for a um, PhD school uh, for a um, for PhD student and young researcher yeah. and and so on. So thank you thank you again and uh, i want to thank also um the other speaker uh but uh, for which maybe since we are um, back in time um did he did he leave i don't see him anymore no maybe he had the problem with the connection uh you mean alexei yes uh i think he has a lecture 
Uh, ah, okay. So I will make. I will not make the question for him to. Uh, uh, so I think. Yes, we, I, I, you can you can write me and I will send the him. Uh, uh, I'm sure he will give the response. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for to to the speakers. I want to anyway um, thank them with a, a clap and uh, and uh, we um, will have now a break, I think. How long is it a break, uh, Sergi? Uh, one hour and a half. Uh, at two we start uh, uh, our practical lesson.